Hi everybody and welcome to this video which recaps the biopsychosocial model in stage 1 psychology. This video is for revision purposes and I'll talk you through obviously each of the sections of the model to help you with your revision. So let's get started. So the biopsychosocial model of behaviour is very very necessary in psychology. So when we um, analyze behavior and when we interpret behavior it needs to be studied from different perspectives. So we can't just have one or two perspectives of examination for behavior. We need to look at it as a holistic concept which means we need to look at the whole model of the biopsychosocial model to really interpret and make as accurate as conclusions as possible regarding the behavior that's being shown. So we use the biopsychosocial model of behavior to do that. So as we can see here, it is broken in, up into three sections. So we've got the bio section, all right, which is the first part. So that explains the biological influences on behavior. We have the psycho section, all right? So that is the cognitive and psychological influences on behavior. So cognitive means thoughts, processing and thinking. And we have the social part of the model, all right, which obviously covers the social factors that influence behavior. So the external factors to the self that may influence behavior in some way. So it's broken up into three sections. So there are three ways, in other words, that behavior can be influenced, but we can't just look at one of these. We can't just look at the bio factors, for example. We need to look at the bio, the psycho and the social factors of any behavior that we are interpreting. So let's go through these in a bit more detail. All right, so let's focus here. As you can see, I've highlighted in red, so the bio or the biological factors. So the biological and or chemical factors that influence behavior. So these include several things, depending on obviously the example of the behavior itself. It may include things like genetics, so having predisposed illnesses or addiction in the family and so on could be a bio or a biological factor that's influencing behavior in some way. It also could be biochemistry. So if someone is under the uh, influence of illicit or prescription drugs or alcohol, or they may be quite reactive to certain food substances like sugar or caffeine. Physiological responses we also need to determine. So increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, galvanic skin response, which is sweating and so on. And of course, hormones, okay, so testosterone, estrogen, adrenaline, cortisol, etc. All of these hormones may have a huge influence on someone's behavior, and it's obviously occurring at the biological um, or the biological part of the model, so the first part of the model. We can also inter um, consider gender differences, okay, so that is a biologically determined factor in terms of male and female differences. So all of these things have, well, what all these things have in common is that they are biological factors that may influence behavior in some way, whether it is mental well-being, mental illness, etc. So the next part of the model is the psychos, which stands for the psychological factors. So this is defined as the cognitive and or psychological factors that influence behavior. And these are universal and individual aspects of humans. So it, what that means is that it includes things that all humans have in common, but also things that are individual to that particular person themselves. So this includes things, as I've got listed there, like perceptions. So we all can perceive as humans, so that's a universal aspect. So we may perceive things differently, because no two people are the same, but humans have, all have, the capacity to perceive nonetheless. Same with learning. So we all learn as human beings. Some people learn at quicker rates than others or in different ways than others and have learning preferences that are different to the, you know, people around them and so on. But everyone can learn. It is a universal concept. Same goes for memories. So everyone has the capacity to remember. They obviously have different memories and some people have better memories than others, but it is a universal factor that all humans possess. Same with cognition, so that's a fancy term for thinking, so everyday thinking that you're aware of your thoughts. So everyone can think, again, different people think differently, think different things and so on, but we all have the capacity to think, so that is a universal factor. Now there are some things that are more individual, so personality is considered to be an individual aspect. 
So we're not quite sure in psychology still what personality is. We talk more about that in year 12 psychology. Um, there's a lot of different theories as to what personality actually is, whether it's based on our childhood, whether it's based on previous experiences, whether it is indeed just traits or whether it is um, having certain needs met that shape our personality. It is definitely influenced by social factors as well, but it's in the psychological part of the model because it is an individual aspect that influences behaviour. So someone might be more extroverted, some people might be more introverted, um, prefer their own company and so on. Some people may be very friendly, some people may be more aggressive. You get the idea. So psychologically, their personality may be an influence or a huge influence on their behaviour. Emotions, all right? Emotions is a universal factor that all people possess. Again, people will feel differently, more strongly, uh, will feel different emotions more strongly than others, but emotion is a universal aspect um, of all humans. We all can feel emotion, in other words. Intelligence, that's an individual aspect. So we all have different IQ levels or different levels of intelligence. Um, some of us have very high IQs, some have lower IQs, but are very, very skilled in other areas. Um, but we all have the potential to develop our intelligence. It is a universal and individual aspect. And of course, things like motivation, our attitudes and our beliefs, they're going to be subjective to the individual, but we all have motivation, our own attitudes and our own beliefs about several things. So all of these are psychological factors, all right? So they are the cognitive so in other words, what's going on in the brain, psychological factors that influence behavior. So some are universal that all humans possess and some are individual, like I said before. Okay, so the final part of the model is the social influences. So the social part of the biopsychosocial model. So this examines a person's social environment and how these factors influence behavior. So the first two, the bio and the psycho, was really focusing on um, the self. This is anything else. This is anything external to the self is what I like to say in class. You may have heard me say that before. So this looks at a person's social environment and how these factors may influence behavior. And as you can probably imagine, this is quite significant. So we need to look at someone's family all right, and their family dynamic as, ex um, in, as an influence in their behavior. Obviously, someone's friendship groups or the crowd that they're hanging out with at the time will be a massive influence on their behavior. Other social networks as well, so your work group, school group, sporting teams, church groups, etc., they're going to influence behaviour with those people present or in that particular group dynamic. Also, global location is important to consider. So Western culture is very different to Eastern culture. So the culture that people are brought up with is going to be a massive influence on how they behave. That kind of links down obviously to culture down here. So Australian culture versus American culture versus English culture, so on and so forth. So there's gonna be differences there in what we find funny or how we behave in certain social situations because of the culture we were raised in. Another really big one, especially in recent years, is mainstream and social media. So things like, you know, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, the list goes on. They have massive, massive implications on people's behavior in terms of certain trends, certain sayings, certain fashion trends, and what's seen as stereotypically cool and what's uncool will have huge influences on behavior, whether they're positive or negative. And of course, we need to consider religion as well. Someone who is very dedicated to their faith or a group that's dedicated to their faith is going to have a massive influence in their behavior and how they act. Okay, so to really summarize this, because it can be a little bit complex, these are some good questions to consider. So bio, what's going on in the body to influence behavior? So bio is obviously chemically, biologically, what's going on in the body that may influence behavior or the behavior that we're seeing. Psycho, what's going on in the brain to influence behavior. So again, like I said, the cognitive and psychological factors. So what's going on in the brain to influence behavior. And social, what are the external factors that are influencing this person's behavior? What's going on in the world around them? Who are they hanging around with? Where are they? What's going on external to the self? 
So put it all together, ladies and gentlemen, and you have the biopsychosocial model. And like I said before, we need to look at all three of these aspects. If we were to just, for example, focus on the psychological, we could be missing out key information with social and biological that really could help us to determine what's influencing someone's behavior. So we've got to look at all three when we're looking at someone's behavior. Okay, everyone, I hope you found that video useful. Uh, as always, let me know if you have any questions or if you would still like some more information on this model as part of your revision. All the best with your revision and I'll see you soon. Bye.